Okay, let's dive in. We're looking today at uh, something causing real headaches in HVAC right now, mm -hmm. finding R454B. It's this new greener refrigerant, but it seems like, well, good luck getting any. We've got some notes, articles, really trying to figure out why it's so scarce. So the mission for this deep dive, unpack this shortage, figure out what it means for you. That's right. And 454B, I mean, the whole point is it's lower global warming potential compared to R410A, the stuff being phased out. It's supposed to be the replacement for, you know, new AC systems, residential, light commercial, good environmental goal, clear path forward, or so we thought. The transition's proving uh, tricky. Tricky is putting it mildly, it sounds like. So where does the problem actually start? Why is it so hard to find? Well, the uh, the main thing the sources point to is this massive, really sudden jump in demand. It's hitting a supply chain that just wasn't quite, you know, scaled up for it. How sudden are we talking? Think about the EPA rule. January 2025. From that date, all new systems installed have to use these lower GWP refrigerants, like R454B. It wasn't a slow ramp up for new equipment installs. It was basically, boom, everyone needs it manufacturers, distributors, contractors, all at once. Right, it's like suddenly every single new car needed a specific brand new type of oil and everyone needed it on the exact same day. Exactly that kind of scale. A huge wave of demand that the existing channels uh, just couldn't handle immediately. Oh, yeah. Demand went through the roof. But is there something inherently difficult about supplying this specific refrigerant? There is, actually, and that's a really key point in the materials we looked at. R454B, unlike the older stuff, needs special safety rated cylinders. They have unique valve fittings, too. Because it's uh, mildly flammable, the containers need to meet higher safety standards. And it turns out a lot of these specific cylinders, they're made overseas. Ah, uh, so it's not just the chemical itself, it's the actual can it comes in that's a bottleneck. Precisely. And then you layer on top of that, you know, the general global supply chain weirdness we still see sometimes, port delays, slow shipping, plus there are new import rules for these kinds of materials. So getting the right amount in the right cylinder across the ocean and then out to distributors, it's created real log jams. Okay, got it. Supply chain nightmare. And with that kind of squeeze, what's happening out in the market? Predictable, I guess. Yeah, pretty much what you'd expect. People started anticipating shortages, worrying they wouldn't have refrigerant for installs or service. So you see hoarding, businesses buying up whatever they can find, you know, just in case. Mm -hmm. Which, understandable for one company, but when everyone does it, it just makes the overall shortage way worse. And I bet that affects the price. I've definitely seen chatter about costs skyrocketing where you can find it. Oh, absolutely. The sources confirm it. Scarcity is driving prices way, way up. We're hearing stories, uh, prices over $1,000 for standard jug in some places. It's a direct result of tight supply, higher logistics costs, and that huge demand spike. Wow. Okay. So practically speaking then, if I'm a contractor scrambling for this or maybe a homeowner whose AC needs this stuff, what do the sources say I can actually do? For contractors, the main advice is plan way, way ahead and talk constantly with your suppliers. Don't wait until you're empty. For homeowners, you know, have a chat with your HVAC company. Ask about your system, what refrigerant it uses, and what their supply situation looks like, or if there are alternatives. Alternatives. Are there other options coming online? Yes, flexibility is important right now. The sources do mention R32. It's another one of these newer low GWP options. Some equipment uses it. And depending on your area and the specific system, its availability might actually be a bit better. Worth asking about. R32, okay. Yes, you know, there might be other paths. Yeah, and look, the overall message seems to be that this is um, hopefully a temporary situation, a transition year, really. The expectation is that cylinder manufacturing will ramp up, maybe global shipping smooths out a bit, and the industry adapts. Supply should eventually catch up. Patience and uh, lots of communication are key for now. Okay, so boiling it all down. The R454B shortage is basically this perfect storm, right? Mm -hmm. You've got a big regulatory deadline causing demand to just explode overnight. That slams into a complicated global supply chain, especially tangled up with these special safety cylinders and shipping issues. And then market behavior like hoarding just throws gasoline on the fire. That pretty much covers the core issues highlighted in the sources. Yeah. You know, what really stands out is how a necessary environmental rule, a push for greener tech, can instantly expose just how fragile or um, complex these global supply chains are. This whole situation really makes you think about managing these big transitions, doesn't it? How do we navigate the ripple effects when we make these large scale shifts? Something to chew on. 